Evening yeah, you. I pre-read it. Evening, y'all. How's it going? Welcome to another Lockdown Live chat, another doom-laden edition of our Lockdown Live chat. And on top of that, our international monthly edition. So here to help me unpack this, that's all things doom, my notorious co-host, the purveyor of all things Dracona Media, Mr. Alec Larson. How's it going, man? Oh, it's cool, man. It's uh, it's exciting to be able to do this with a, an international artist, and um, it's cool to be able to do it at a different time of day, you know? <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. We do appreciate it, like, our guest actually joining us. Today, we're joined all the way from Tokyo, Japan. They call themselves... I guess samurai, uh, samurai doom metal, focusing more on the doom metal side of things. You guys would probably know their style as kind of a, a sludge, I guess a, a sludge like stoner doom side. Today we joined all the way from Tokyo, Japan, Nobuhitu from Hebi Katana. Welcome, man. Konbawa. Yeah, Konbawa. Yeah, it's really nice, nice to like join this kind of the really cool chat. The focus on like doom like metal is my honor so really looking forward to this chat thanks thanks Blair, for inviting ah uh, more than happy to i guess for anybody that doesn't really know the back history uh in 2020 last year um i actually visited japan on a little bit of a mission to distribute some south african metal i went through to one of the largest independent cd stores in japan actually based in uh, I think about two or three stations away from Akihabara, a shop called Disc Union. And, and that day I met a, met a guy who was one of the main buyers and sellers at Disc <laughs> Union. You had to go to the top floor to go make this happen. I was greeted by Nabahitu and we just got chatting. He started talking about how he wanted to start a band. We were looking at, uh, at the whole metal like landscape in Japan and yeah, I got sent back to South Africa uh, due to the whole pandemic. And then during this whole process, Nobu followed through and he actually started a band, Eddie Katana. So Nobu, maybe, maybe let's actually start right at the beginning and where we left off. How was the whole process of starting this band during a pandemic and 18 months later, how's it been going? Okay, so it's been a while. It's been feel like a little wrong, but uh, remembering that in the beginning of the process, I just like uh, recorded like a demo song with the iPhone. <laughs> no ways. That's, that's <laughs> no the way. beginning. That's the beginning, basically, because the I've been playing the like so many other bands like uh, heavy metal, like uh, any other like stuff. But I really want to do the like do metal from my heart because it's my kind of main like a uh, musical like uh, taste so i've been starting the like recording my leaf or idea or like a uh, lyrics whatever in the uh, iphone that's a start <laughs> that's awesome wow. Wow. Oh, yeah, and, thank and you. obviously and then obviously you went and you found a couple of other guys that kind of saw the same headspace uh, as you went through a bit of a recruiting process how was the whole jam session, getting to know each other and actually deciding we need to write some original material now? How was that? Okay, basically we haven't know each other. No, wow. completely no. Yeah, just like uh, met at the time in the pandemic time. So it's kind of like, um, it's a three guys, Happy Katana is a three guys. So we have nothing to do at, in the pandemic. It's a too much free time. Right? Yeah. So yeah, too much. We start, too much. Yeah. Yeah. Then we started like jamming, jamming, jamming in the studio. It was pretty empty. So it's just like a heaven. No one not there. So we kind of like the only one and uh, hanging out in the studio so often. Then to finish up, <laughs> like a couple of songs and kind of organizing songs. It's kind of basically the start of the like, uh, recording of the album. That's a basically to start oh that's awesome amazing um and it's quite unique i guess to have um a stoner doom band in um japan right 
And um, maybe you can tell us a little bit how you came up with the, the name Hebi Katana. What does it mean? Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to put the, like a really cool name, but uh, I want to show the Japanese feeling as well. Because in Japan, there's several like Doom or Stone band because all, but basically it's all in English. Mm. It's cool, but uh, I want to start a kind of new type of vibe, even for name. So I just, I was thinking like, what's the world in the common in, the, in the foreign countries people? The katana is a quite like popular. Most of people know that. So, and the, what's the good combination? gonna be i was thinking and uh, it's a snake happy means a snake in english so that's the combination that's awesome snake right. katana basically that's really snake cool. katana yeah yeah that's awesome oh yeah well i mean like uh, like we mentioned you guys kind of dab in the psychedelic sludge stoner doom realm um you said uh, before you hadn't actually met any of the pre of the band members uh, until this whole pandemic. So, how how was the initial feeling out process when you got into the studio? Because you could tell your drummer has a little bit of almost like a jazz type style. Bassist is quite like fluid, and then you're very almost like sludgy grunge at your core. Uh, so. How was it? How was it working with each other and being like, okay, we got something. Uh, so first of all, we just like a music lover. First of all, so we haven't like talked so much. Basically, we just chatting in the, in the studio, like uh, with the in the break of the jamming. So how can I say? We just like drunk a lot with each other and kind <laughs> uh, of understand each other. So basically. Our like a common like a taste is like Black Sabbath or seventies or like hard rock like a authentic one like ACDC like else. Mm. So basically, like feeling is kind of a bit weird at the first time because we have no each other. So but uh, we're just music level. It's the just solved naturally. Oh, awesome! No, that's it's really cool. Always, so common ground basically. Common ground, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, yeah, I mean, there's definitely been something that I that I loved about Japan is how music is almost a common language, even if it, like not everybody could speak English or not everybody could speak like Japanese. It, like when you speak about the bands, it's always kind of like okay, this type of uh, is sound. So when you guys joined, did each of you guys have a different uh, different musical influence coming in? Yeah, absolutely. Like, uh, even like we are the music lover, basically, bass guy's favorite, favorite band is the two. Cool. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah, so he's more into like a progressive, like kind of like a more complicated, like a bass line. Mm -hmm. Is the he played in exactly like a two, like a bass player in for the Harry Katana <laughs> album. Also, like a drama is kind of like a real authentic type of rock and roller. So he loves the Van Halen or Al Smith. Or like SDC, kind of like also mm. like an RM metal. So, and me is really mm. just like a Sabbath hat, simply. So it's kind of <laughs> matching each other, mixed with each other really well. It just That's happened. Really, That's really cool. Um, so obviously, we're we're from a different place to you, and in South Africa, the music industry is sort of basically almost shut down for. Uh, gigs and concerts and stuff like that. I wanted to see how things are going your side. Like, do, are there still shows happening? Um, what's happened uh, during the pandemic for you? Well, basically, like your live scenes are quite like terrible, like uh, as everywhere else. But uh, we care about like kind of distance in the, like in the venue. Yeah. So we put like a skeleton carton kind of like that and the sanitize like each other or, like don't try to drink too much <laughs> yeah so yeah, we yeah, are no. like a, yeah kind so, of like a, yeah. Yeah, dealing with it yeah yeah so you guys are still mm -hmm. having some shows it's just um proper proper safety procedures in place yes awesome yeah 
Uh, I mean, you guys, uh, I, I did notice when you guys started performing, it wasn't very big, uh, like, gatherings, but you guys kind of were just out there, almost on the road, just trying to perform as much as you can, even if it was just 50 people or 100 people on a Wednesday night, like, after work. You, you guys really did, did push it uh, quite, quite a bit. Did you guys pretty much like cover most of Tokyo? Because I know you guys are performing in Yokohama. Did you guys uh, like try basically play every part of Tokyo that you could play in? Okay, basically for now, so we are like only performing in Tokyo, like or like next to the Tokyo. But we really love to like travel around, not only in Japan, in the future. Mm -hmm. I really love to like play in foreign countries, basically in the future yeah that would be mm. awesome <laughs> yeah um it would be awesome to actually have you guys here that's something that we could make happen when the world is less you know shitty <laughs> um absolutely yeah yeah it'd be awesome um so you mentioned like basically jamming in the studio is that um is that basically how you recorded via jamming or did you have some stuff laid out and written before going into the to studio? How was your process for recording the album? Okay, basically we recorded the record album in exactly the same room we jammed and practice. Then the record we sent to the like a mixing guy in California. Mm. Okay. That he did a lot of production after that. That's awesome. No, that's wow. very cool. And something I've noticed, obviously, because you're you're a three piece, and a three piece will either have like the bassist do the vocals or the guitarist you in 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 your yeah. case doing vocals, right? So I know as a guitarist and as a vocalist how difficult it is to get into the playing and singing at the same time. So how how did for this project like there's some pretty groovy riffs that are quite difficult to I'd imagine to sing over. So did you just practice independently, or how did you get into the the space of being able to do both at the same time? Well, first of all, thank thank you for recognizing the how hard it is singing and guitar at the same time. I really appreciate it <laughs> at first. Yeah, but. Uh, Basically, it's the strangest that I've never like think about that. It's that tough. It's kind of naturally I'm doing that. So, but I only one thing I careful, being careful is like uh, don't try to like uh, making the too difficult riff because I cannot play it in the venue in the gig. So to avoid <laughs> that, I try to like a more like organized and simple. Yeah, more than like complicated. That's what I do. No, hundred percent. That's like, the you 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 write so that you can do the live performance, and that's the, always the best way to do things. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, like we mentioned, you guys are kind of like a blend of proto psychedelic doom mixed in with a little bit of sludge and grunge. So, as we are talking about doom metal. I guess we can all agree that Black Sabbath kind of started it all, not in terms just of heavy metal, but the 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 doom sound. So for you, especially out in Japan, who were your influences, like from Sludge and Doom? Like what were the bands that kind of got you into the sound? Okay, basically, like um, in my point of view. Like a doom metal is really like related to 70s hard rock. And yeah. in Japan, there's a really cool band called Flower Troubling Band from the 70s. Okay. It's kind of like a psychedelic, like a pro doom and doing the really quiet, like a smoky, like a hard rock. That's kind of the, my beginning. Also, like a, in Japan, there's not so much of doom metal band. So, I just influenced by the okay, Western music as well. So I gotta say in Japan, maybe so like a famous blue metal band is like a police or a church of misery. I heavily influenced by them. Right. Yeah. That's cool. I, I yeah. do recall you mentioned the one 
Sludge Band, Caius. This uh, this old ah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Obvi uh, and like obviously like the the sludge uh, element uh, like like bleeds heavily into the heavy katana vibes. Um, I guess something that I wanted to actually ask that we weren't going to uh, discuss, but the artwork uh, for for the album cover, the artwork for Heavy Katana, it is very 1970s. Great, yes. Ah, there we go. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> it's it's very 19 like 70s Grateful Dead psychedelic uh, type appearance. Who who came up with the idea of the artwork? Okay, basically. It's done by the like artist, in, maybe Indonesian artist called Doom Morif. I met him through the Instagram. Okay. Yeah, Doom Morif. Yeah. So, yeah. So when I like uh, was thinking about artwork, it's like uh, October, September, in the last year. So I cannot meet new people in the venue. That all I can do is like uh, just in uh, searching through the internet or like, using the Instagram connection. So that's all I could do. So I just like reached him and uh, he been writing this kind of the psychedelic and uh, can do metal type of the like artwork. I just asked him for the commission. So can you do the like uh, salt and snake and uh, <coughs> sweet, sweet reef stuff and the scar? That's it. Yeah, he did a perfect awesome. tree. Yeah, he did. It is one did thing, it, always, it always blows me away. It's one thing that, uh, and Alec also has do, uh, done this a lot, where you find international connections. I mean, you're in Japan, like you say, not a big do metal scene, but just through the internet, through th stuff like Instagram or Facebook, you're able to connect with all these other like-minded and designers. And it's just, I just really love how connected the world uh, is, like the metal community is now, especially you know, during these hard pandemic times. Yeah, basically, basically, like it's kind of like irony. So in the pandemic, I cannot go to the venue, like uh, cannot go to the like, party, so can't like meet new people, but uh, I could use like internet more. So okay, more easier to like reach to the like a foreign, like a new talented people or artists. That's kind of, mm -hmm. it's basically, it's still bad, but like it's a good point from the bad situation. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, when we look at your band camp, there's like a ton of merchandising op options um, for for the album. And like, I mean, you have uh, distribution of CDs, tapes and vinyls and all that good stuff, obviously uh, from different parts of the world maybe unpack um, how you went about yeah. that and maybe what some of the options are. Okay, so at the very first, like when I released the individually and uh, streaming the like, songs, it's just only the one like label in uh, like local friends and uh, doing this really small label. We just released the CDR and uh, like a handmade kind of like stuff. But after that, like, uh, I tried to contact more and more like do metal label through the like, internet. So some of the rebel like, in, so, like uh, really fortunately, like uh, interested in our music. So maybe this one is the the cassette from the Argentina mm -hmm. like, label. So it's kind of basically like first like, contact for us to really like uh, distribute the stuff. And after that, so many like uh, kind of reaction from the over the world, like Italian label or like American label. So I'm really just, uh, I gotta say, it's a, just a blast. It's a little fortunate. No, that's really awesome. Yeah, I, Congrats, yeah. man. Yeah, man, like, like just being able to reach out. And I think it also just goes to show if it's like inspiration for anybody else, like don't give up. Like you didn't uh, settle for one no or not a reply. You just kept looking and looking. And I guess, I guess that's kind of the, one of the things of working at Disc Union, like being involved also with them, you have 
almost like a path because I see you guys do have an, uh, the album that will be distributed via Disc Union with a Japanese OBI sleeve uh, and all of that. So, I mean, it's, yeah, it's just much respect, man. I mean, it really, it's, people don't understand. We complain about how small the doom metal scene is here. But when you're literally one of a hundred people in a, in a city, the size of South Africa, you know, in Tokyo, you know, it's really like, yeah, it's very impressive. But let's move that forward because you guys put a whole bunch of merchandise, there's CDs, vinyls, cassettes, posters, all of that good stuff. But you guys recently put out a music video also, the, the Struggle with a Live video. So we'll include that here for everybody to watch. But a music video, Nobu, how was that? How was the whole process? How long did it take to edit? All of that, tell us. Okay, so we decided to like, make a music video because the, we like, uh, <laughs> like making this Japanese version of the city with the office strip through mm. this Kenyan. So this Kenyan like, uh, asked us to like, make the, some kind of the advertising. So the, some of the, uh, so other guys are asking me like, uh, what you want to do? Like, uh, I just you know, like, uh, want to do like a music video. <laughs> then that, okay. So basically process is quite simple. And the uh, bass player, his name is Yasuzo. Is a working in like, uh, yeah, like shooting the shooting movie kind of industry, like camera okay. crews. Yeah. So he has kind of like a crew and a team of the camera guy and the writing staff guy. So, is the hugely helped by the that team that's the basically production is so all i did is is like a just rocking hat like this in the whole day 12 hours <laughs> in a benny that's, just that's bang awesome. my head like this and shout with <laughs> rocks and uh, that's i remember because the i completely passed out after the shooting <laughs> <laughs> Basically, I, say, I gotta say, like, I really appreciate of the all production, but uh, and production like that team did is, is like a uh, really fantastic. Yeah, it's a really cool video. Yeah, the, the the editing and everything is quality. How long did it take um, for the guys to finish doing the editing and post production after you recorded? How long was it? How Maybe I think wait? in the two weeks. I think. Oh. Yeah, wow. we we like uh, shoot it in maybe, and beginning of the last month, they finish up the maybe beginning of the, this month. So maybe two or like two weeks, I guess. Damn, that was damn quick. Yeah, <laughs> I, got I think so. Quickly. Yeah. <laughs> That is really Oh, that cool. wouldn't happen here in South Africa. Mm -mm. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, Maybe that. Tell yeah, me, the, that. Lo the, the location that you guys recorded at, it, it was a weird, uh, it, it looked like a weird type of club setting. Uh, what was that location? Okay, so it's like a kind of small venue in the Tokyo. So basically, it's right located in uh, maybe close to the Shinjuku. It's a big city. Mm. So basically, but I don't know the detail because the like uh, that team like uh, decided everything. So maybe they expected and that band is a little fits to the like songs atmosphere or the or like image of my band. It's okay. So it's a, I gotta say it's a really dusty and small and smoky like Benny, that's all. <laughs> that's oh, all I can I'm say. Sure, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it'll be turned into an actual venue soon enough, uh, especially uh, if it's anywhere like near Shaboyo or Shinjuku, you know, like. Yeah. But <laughs> I, I don't think people, re like anybody that hasn't been to Japan really realizes on how many venues there actually are available to go perform in. I mean, you guys have played like all through Tokyo and stuff, but I'm sure there's still quite a few venues that you're just waiting for the pandemic to loosen up so they can start to have crowds. Um, yeah, like uh, in terms of uh, in terms of upcoming uh, gigs coming uh, coming up, I know you guys have a few. Do you want to maybe just like what are, what is the game plan for them? <laughs> 
Okay, was well, so, um, it's a still like kind of pandemic situation still, but mm-hmm. we kind of getting used to it to how to like deal with it. So the behavior, behavior of the like audience, it's still like uh, kind of really polite. They don't do the like uh, mosh or like dive anymore because it's kind of quite like harmful and dangerous. But we All still right. like uh, yeah, we still have the like uh, so many listeners of who really into like uh, this kind of type the heavy music. So. All right, we could do is we, we gotta do is like right? just rocking hard and as possible. That's yeah, awesome. you gotta gotta push push through it. Um, I guess you guys do have the Olympic Games. That's pretty much like uh, underway there. That's been a that's been an interesting topic. How's it, how's the country been dealing with that? Obviously, vaccination rollouts a lot quicker now. How's it, how's this been with the Olympics? Pretty much like this week underway. Okay, so basically, most of my friends and disagree with the holding Olymp- Olympic because it's kind of, I gotta say, it's not so good. So it's not well like uh, organized, not well prepared. And uh, okay, so but it's a different topic. Also, oh, vaccination <laughs> is kind of quite little. Kind of, it's a spreading enough because I already got the right uh, ticket for the vaccination and uh, my girlfriend only took the work well, like a first time the vaccination so it's getting spread okay that's good yeah. So, thank you. yeah so from your music it seems like you you're very like experienced in guitar and actually playing music so i was wondering is heavy katana your first band or is it a is it a follow-up like it was the band that you've really wanted to do okay it's like a follow-up the band it's not like my first band because i've been playing the so many bands before the heavy katana mm. but uh, i like the most of type of the music t- type of music but uh like i said like do metal is kind of like a, something i really want to do like a, as a long term as a main band so that's the time and uh, i'm really like appreciate it. it's kind of like uh, have this, some reaction from the, all over the world and uh, especially like this zoom chat yeah <laughs> well damn I'm, right I, people in south africa <laughs> yeah i must say that your experience does show like the the music is quality and like like we've already said obviously I know how difficult it is to play and sing at the same time. Oh. So you can clearly see the experience that you bring to the band. Um, I think, well, when we're in like the mode of wrapping up this chat, um, is there anything else you would like to, you know, like plug or promote and like what's co- coming next for Hebe Katana? Okay. So basically we already doing the, like a, uh post-production and practicing a lot for the second album. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it's coming up the maybe beginning of next year. That's awesome. Yeah, so also like a, I really like want to travel around and uh, like as a tour like a next year is my like a main goal in the next year. Of course, like if, if I could have the chance and I really want to travel in South Africa as well. <laughs> that would be awesome damn. yeah to meet you guys damn right you've got to you've got to have you down here got to spread the doom here uh, in south africa also so yeah i mean i guess like as we actually are wrapping uh, uh, wrapping this up i mean yeah um any uh, any other final thoughts any uh, anything that you want to add on doom metal that people might want to look into any bands that you think uh, if they were looking into doom metal that you would suggest the floor is yours what's what's up okay so i'm really like uh, like uh, been liking the one band called the black spell from the eatery it's really cool, like a psychedelic, like a kind of occult type of kind of doom metal. So, so we've been like a good friend, and uh, from the very beginning of the, we created a band because we like kind of like created in that basically at the same time. So, if you like the like a doom metal, so we, you gotta check it. It's a black spell. Black spell. Also, like uh, yeah, 
Braxton. And through the my like whole band activity, I just want to like spread the like a Doom community as well around the world, not only in Japan. So that's my like a uh, long term kind of goal as a musician. That's really awesome. Well, man, yeah, I know, Booth. Man, again, congratulations on all the success. It's just a testament to the drive in wanting to put out new music. And yeah, man, thank you so much for taking time out to, to actually join us here in South Africa. It's really been an honor and we'll be continuing to listening and checking out all of your socials. So again, thank you so much, man. Thank you so much for you guys too. Awesome. Alec, what do you say? We're done with another Doom week where we've been talking all the different sh- subgenres this month. What do you Why say? Why not? Why not? Hundred <laughs> percent. I think I think we uh, we've nailed it, and um, it's perfect. Oh, thank you. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Awesome, guys. Well, yeah, guys. Thanks again for tuning in. Thanks again to Nobahitu for joining us all the way from Tokyo. We'll be back same time, same place on the interweb next week. Keep that social distancing going. And yeah, hopefully this pandemic hoo-ha will be over soon enough. Also, guys, have a wicked week ahead. Laters.